you are on for a special presentation tonight. You're going to hear about an undocumented human, whatever that is, and the trail of anarchy they've been on throughout the United States, or the geographic region we call the United States. Um, Alma, why don't you come up here? Give it up, give it up for the Summer family. Hi, I'm Alma. Uh, that is Neo, and we uh, would like to ask that no one take pictures of his face, please. Um, no problem, the back of it. And Brian is Neo's dad, and Brian's last name is Stith, just in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> He, it was, it was kind of interesting because I was, what's that? You were the only one that matters. Yeah, I, well, I was, uh, I woke up before Brian did, so when we first got together, he was still kind of waking up, and when we had Neo, there was like a, it was kind of difficult for Brian not to, he, he like, he wasn't okay with not giving him papers at first, because, we've all kind of grown up the same way where like your your paperwork is your identity and your birth certificate you know proves who you are and your social allows you to work and things like that so it was a little bit difficult you know not having this piece of paper showing like this is my son and we are his parents and uh I, had, I just like, I explained the best I could that that is not what proves Neo's identity. Um, this piece of paper is a contract between, the birth certificate is a contract between us and the state on Neo's behalf. And that, that piece of paper is not what proved his name. I mean, he might even want to change his name at some point. Anyway, a lot of kids do, so. Uh, it's kind of silly us naming a child. I had a, I kind of had a hard time dealing with that too. Just, it's just like we are the ones who choose it's this human being's name, and should it not be their choice to begin with, or later on in life, or I don't know, call a bug or something like that until they get old enough to decide. So, anyway, that's just a little bit about that. But uh, I kind of woke up through the Ron Paul movement and. Uh, went to Pork Fest and all that stuff. In 2011, I came up with the idea for Jackalope. At the time, I called it Pork West, just to kind of poke at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I wanted to, I created a Porcupine pointing, pointing West and had a date that was to be determined. Um, and there was a little animosity about that, but I learned about copyleft and open source and a lot of that, those ideas through Pork Fest. And so at that point, I decided uh, we shouldn't waste any more time, and Arizona should have its own festival. So I created a group on Facebook called the Scorpion Pine Freedom Festival, which is like a scorpion with a, or a porcupine with a scorpion tail. So it was like sort of morphed. And then somehow somebody, I don't even know if it was me or somebody else, but somebody came up with the idea for Jackalope. And that's when Jackalope was born. Uh, I created a website, a Facebook page, and in 2012, we had the first Jackalope Freedom Festival. So, uh, let's see, about the next year, the next year, I got an uh, email through the website from the government uh, in Apache County. They wanted to know who was in charge and where to send an official letter. Because if you have a group of 70 people or more, they want you to get a special use permit and pay them all these fees and answer 16 pages of questions. And that wasn't gonna happen. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ernest Hancock. He has a website called freedomsphoenix.com. He's a good friend of mine and he called the <laughs> government jurisdiction and said, what do you guys care about my friend's camping party? You know, and she's like, well, it looks like it's organized and it looks like there's vendors and if you have this many people, you need this and sanitation and blah, blah, blah. And Basically, Ernie told them, you know, I'm a journalist with Freedoms Phoenix, and this is just a camping party, and you're not going to get any of that information. And that year, the second year, two Forest Service, well, law enforcement and Forest Service showed up multiple times. Um, um, I think it was like Friday, the main day the festival kind of start, starts. Uh, two Forest Service Rangers came up to my campsite and introduced themselves, and I said, I am all the back. I should have just said hi. Now, like, thinking back, I would not have, like, gave up my name. And he goes, oh, Alma, nice site. And I'm thinking, is he talking about my campsite, or is he talking about 
my website because I have like signs everywhere, like Agorist Marketplace signs. Because um, Agorist Marketplace is a website I also created the same year. And it's free to get connected with other agorists that accept alternative currencies, silver, gold, barter, trade, Bitcoin, Dash, whatever. Um, and, and so they basically just said, well, we just want to make sure nobody's driving ATVs in the meadow. And if people bring guns, they're gun safe. And oh, and if more people show up, they can camp over here and they can camp over here, like pointing to the endless forest. Like it's endless forest out there. So I'm like, okay, well, thanks for blessing us with your presence. If you guys think you have information, you, you know, should be shared with these people. You should set up a campsite and hang out for the weekend. And they left us alone ever since. So next year, August, uh, July 31st through August 7th, will be the sixth annual Jack of Oak Freedom Festival. So come out and camp. It's free to camp, attend, and attend. Camping at. It will be free forever. We do get donations for porta potties, but I'm hoping to alleviate that as soon as I get a uh, group of people who are willing to go out there with me ahead of time and dig some composting toilets for the week. Because now it's a week long event. So uh, definitely bring rain gear. It rains. It's like right after or during monsoon season. It's right after school starts. So all of the status are gone and not there camping. So we're completely left alone. I have some notes, so I stay on track. All right, so let's see. Before I became a full-time agorist, I designed cell towers for a living. And I had a boss that wouldn't let me uh, go on sidewalks because every single time we were on a sidewalk, somebody would bring up the economy. And I, was, I would always bring up the Federal Reserve because to me, that was like you know, the end point. And so eventually, I was pretty much uh, just stuck at my desk, not able to leave, not able to work from home, making a lot of money, but also having a lot of money stolen from me. And I decided, okay, well, I'm over this, finally. After like three years of complaining to Brian every day I came home, I just finally had to quit, so I quit. And I was lucky enough to have been offered a uh, job working from home, doing the same type of uh, job, to designing cell towers. So like, if you're thinking about leaving your slave job and you can find work in the same career, I guess, but working from home, so you're not having to work for a boss every day, at least it gets a step in the right direction. And whether or not like they 1099 you or you get paid per job, I actually made more money that way because I was getting paid per job instead of working an hourly rate. So. Um, it worked out pretty well for a while. Uh, and then we had Neo in 2014. He just turned two on Monday. And we uh, had him at a hospital in Gilbert, Arizona. Um, after 14 hours of labor at home, he was like stuck inside me and didn't want to come out. So we went to the hospital. And after the they gave me an epidural, I had made a comment about you know, are you guys gonna force me to fill out paperwork or a birth certificate? Or I said something, I was like, kind of messed up. And later on, we were contacted by one of the one of the nurses in nursery, and she's like, a social worker's gonna be coming to talk to you because of what you said while you were in emergency. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so, uh, we ended up avoiding the social worker that day, and uh, it came time for us to leave, basically, and it was like the last day, and the social worker finally hunted me down, and she waited for Brian to leave the room, because she thought I was the weak one. <laughs> <laughs> and she came in there, and she asked me all kinds of questions, like, do you guys have a car seat? Do you have a support system? And, is it, you know, yes, yes, yes. And then she couldn't tell me that there was a law saying that I had to sign a contract with us and the state. She couldn't tell me that there was a law, so we decided not to sign the birth certificate. And the registrar lady was of Mexican descent, and she came in like three times. Will you at least initial where you won't sign? And she was like flabbergasted. She really was curious why we do not want United States citizenship for our son. So 
Um, we denied signing anything, initialing anything. They had him low jacked and everything, and they decided to unlow jack him and let us take him home. So we took him home, and we've uh, we stayed in a, the apartment we were living in for, I think it was like around six months or something like that, just before Brian finally decided to quit his job too. And we went on the road before we even had a house. So we were like in my Jeep and we were hauling a trailer and we drove to Texas for the Texas Bitcoin conference. And I spoke there and that was really cool because there was a bunch of regulators and I spoke right after all of the regulators and right after all of the regulators got done talking and off the stage I get up there and I go, I would like to welcome everyone to the livestock management program. <laughs> and it just, I felt like I got a good laugh. And it felt good because, you know, they had just sat there and listened to that boring conversation. And to know that you're still a slave and these people are trying to come in there and, like, take control of anything and everything they can, it's just, I'm over it, completely over it. So, I mock it and I find it to be a uh, healthy way to express liberty and instead of, I guess, an angry way. Um, so, let's see. We kind of gallivanted around a little bit. We helped the Blush family move out of their apartment. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they own Brave New Books in Austin. They've been here to speak. So you know who they are. And they were uh, also kind of going through the same sort of situation we were, downsizing, getting rid of stuff, looking for an alternative. I think they already had their bus at that time, um, but they hadn't moved into it yet. So... We eventually went back to Concho, Arizona, where our friend Patrick sort of took us in and we lived in his trailer. And we found out that his neighbors next door were selling a Winnebago. And so we tried to do a work trade with the, the guy that owned the Winnebago. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to. I wasn't really happy with what he wanted from Brian and I was kind of worried that the amount of work he wanted done wouldn't get done after Brian had like charged him his hourly rate. The way he was doing it was just kind of old school. And so we decided not to go that route. And a friend of ours um, came into some money. He had been off grid in his Greyhound bus for like 30 years, decided to buy a house on the grid, went to call the electric company, and they go, we, we want your social. And he was like, fuck you. And so he calls us up and he goes, will you guys come and do an off grid solar installation at my property? And we were like, yes, no permits, no permission. And so for exchange for that work, he paid for the Winnebago and we were able to get it and fix it up and then take it down to Oracle to do this off-grid solar installation job. And that was like our together as a family off-grid agorist job that kind of got us started in uh, this journey. All right. So this summer, um, I'm going to kind of catch you up a little bit. We drove to Austin to retrofit the Bitcoin.com bus. Uh, we had been living at Freedom Ranch, Adam Kokesh's property, for a few months. And uh, Jackalope was kind of coming up, and we really wanted to get the Blush family to Jackalope. So Brian and I planned a trip, went to Austin, uh, cat raced. She got a bunch of sponsors and raised a bunch of money and they were able to retrofit their bus and take it on tour after that. So they came to Jackalope. It was a bunch of fun. Um, while I was in Austin, I decided to write a... Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink. I have a drink right here. All right, okay, so while we were in Austin, I decided to write a proposal to the Dash Network. Uh, Dash is a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. A lot of you are probably already familiar with it. They have a network of masternodes that vote on budget proposals, unlike Bitcoin. So anybody can write a proposal to the Dash Network, including me, and I did. And I wrote a proposal for Dash to sponsor Jackalope, and it included they got the stage branded, so all the speaking and all the music and all the stuff that was performed on the stage has Dash in the background. 
they got the ATV branded that was ridden around by Brian and Mio and a bunch of other people the whole week and there was some other advertisement literature and they also got the Dashmobile branded which is our Winnebago so after Jackalope was over we went to uh, Chino Valley Arizona where a friend of ours uh, lets us stay on his property and I sanded and painted our entire house after doing the Bitcoin.com bus. It's like seriously, I was like going for the most insane year ever. I, was, I don't know what, what the heck. So I sand and paint my house and we then get on the road again and we drive to Alabama. This is all this summer. So we go to the Rethinking Everything conference. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's okay. It's, a, it's at a 4-H club. I'm not really into conferences, like that type of environment anymore. I don't feel like you get to uh, get to know the people that you're, you're, you want to experience long enough. Like even a three-day conference at a hotel, you're not getting a long enough experience with the people that you might start projects with. You might even start a project, you know, while you're meeting. That's why Pork Fest is super important, and the length of it and the type of event it is camping. So I, I kind of feel like I would love to see more events like that. And if you want to know where places in Colorado are, I've already found them for you. <laughs> so we'll talk after. I'll let you know there's some really awesome camping uh, spots that are free and open, and I think you'll all be left alone, and I'll come and help you. And if you get forest service rangers like bothering you, I'll videotape. So I'm on board. <laughs> All right. On our way back from the Rethinking Everything conference, we stopped in Houston, Texas. I have a friend. His name is Michael Fielding. He's basically occupying uh, abandoned property right now. He is on Twitter at Sailboat Diaries. He actually has already even occupied an island for a short period of time. And he's definitely looking to do that again. So if that's your thing and you're sick of the overhead and you want to go on an adventure, look up Michael Fielding in Houston. Um, after this tour here, which is actually the undocumented human uh, crypto tour, Colorado crypto tour, we want to go back to Houston. So I am planning on doing another uh, proposal to the Dash Network. I did a proposal to the Dash Network to come here and it did not pass. So, you know, we're doing things the old fashioned way by begging and groveling to our friends and family to help us, you know, support us on this journey. Uh, we also have a Patreon and YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that, if you're a content creator, Patreon is super cool. Uh, you can get paid, you know, per content, video, blog, article, podcast, anything. So I'm hoping that uh, this next this next dash proposal I'm going to write is for an event in Houston called For the Community. It's an event that Derek Bros puts on with uh, some other people there. And we're going to take the Dash Mobile there and set up and talk to people about, you know, liberty and community. And uh, he's doing a lot of community gardening and things like that. So I want to check out the Houston Free Thinkers House. They just actually did a, a recent video about what they're doing there. So I'm hoping that uh, we get to experience that. That event's been going on for a while, and uh, I know that it gets a lot of action. Uh, we were thinking about going to Free DC, which is November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, but I think we're going to pass on that one. But if any of you guys want or are interested in that type of event, I would definitely check it out. I heard about it on uh, BitNation. BitNation is like a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. They actually call it something else, like I think it has voluntarism in there or something. Um, but basically, you can document your identity on the blockchain. So you don't need to document your identity through the government any further, nor do you need to document your property through the government. Like their job is completely null and void. So uh, we have a couple acres in Concho, Arizona that I got at auction for 600 bucks. There's a website called auctionaz.org. 
www.ghostbusters.com and you can buy land if you want. And what I plan on doing is putting up a sign that says this, uh, this property is documented on the blockchain, it's no longer part of Apache County jurisdiction. If you would like more information, visit here. And then we're going to start doing whatever we want until they want to harass us or something. I don't know. We'll see. Adam Kokesh is kind of getting harassed, but he has Mark Stevens working with him. And Mark Stevens is like, prove your jurisdiction, and they can't. So definitely check out Mark Stevens. Um, all right, a couple other things I just wanted to mention. If you guys haven't heard of Slack Chat or Telegram, they're super awesome messaging apps that can connect you to like your niche group. So like BitNation has a Slack Chat, and I've met some really cool people in there. And they also have a lot of information as well. Um, and then Telegram is encrypted messaging. And what's cool about Telegram is you can create your own channels. So I've created a Trail of Anarchy channel and you can become a member or not, but you can view it, it's public. And I also created an undocumented human channel, as well as a seasteading nomad. Because Brian and I, he might argue this, but we will seriously trade our Winnebago for a sailboat. For real. So if you know anybody with a sailboat, or a group of people who are also looking to sail around the world without permission, let us know. Uh, a couple other groups I just want to mention that are also working on other types of citizenships that I've come across are Pantera and uh, the World Citizen. Um, I don't know if they actually have anything going on besides videos, but Pantera is definitely putting together documentation. Alright, so the last thing I like to uh, mention at the end of my speeches is I would like to say that if we did not have government, we would be flying cars. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Questions? Questions? Uh, can you talk a little bit of the, um, about the unschooling of the human you're shepherding currently? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's a very natural learning environment. There's not really much of a structure at all. I don't know exactly if you want specifics like our daily lives or whatever, but um, like if you want to know some apps or whatever that I use with Neo, one of them is the Endless Alphabet is what that one is called Brian was talking about. And basically it has a word, it says the word and what the word means, and then the letters disappear from the word and you pull the letters and you put them on top, like kind of like a puzzle. And it sounds out the letter and says the letter as your finger is like dragging it. And then after you get all of the letters on top of the letters, it celebrates and says the word. And then you watch a like video, a little montage of these monsters um, acting out what the word means. And Neo can, I mean, he's two and just turn and he can drag these letters like this. And not only that, he looked at the apple juice yesterday and goes, apple juice. And I hadn't said it out loud. I, I hadn't said anything. He knew what it was. Oh, and there was something else, the teriyaki sauce. He said, teriyaki sauce. <laughs> He's repeating everything we say right now. You gotta be careful. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, the the hospital we we plan to go to if any there are any complications. They have midwives, so they're open to like alternative. But I was definitely way 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 alternative. Um, but I did have a midwife, and she and I had a, a understanding that maybe paperwork might get lost in the mail, which a lot of them are open to.
I would say anything signed under duress is null and void, fraudulent.
we have a very, very special Liberty on the Rocks next time on November 2nd. Um, my good friend Elliot will be speaking about the Silk Road, the impact of the Silk Road, and the, the mastermind behind the Silk Road, and his vision for what he wanted to create. So if you're at all interested in cryptocurrency, the Silk Road, uh, black markets, or anything like that, or if you've never heard of Ross Ulbrich and you want to learn more about Ross and his vision, please come the next time on November 2nd. We're going to be talking about the Silk Road, cryptocurrency, and Ross's vision. So we'll see you on November 2nd. Thank you.